What's going on Workforce? Brian here and today we're talking about the state of video game reviews, namely that they suck and I think they're pretty much not needed anymore. But before we dive into that, the reviews are in for Final Fantasy XIV. If you guys have not seen the reviews for Shadowbringers, it is destroying out there. 9.5 from IGN, overall Metacritic of 92 user score of 92. Obviously, user scores are fun. Over you. <laughs> if you ever go check out Metacritic, there are either 10s or zeros with a couple like 1s, maybe some 9s sprinkled in there just for a little bit of flavor. But that is generally the opinion. You're either going to like this game or you don't. Thus, the thumbs up, thumbs down system seems to be the most true form of reviews ever. Because <laughs> who, who uses a 7? Honestly, maybe Destiny. But regardless, <laughs> today we want I want to talk about in the state of video game reviews, like I stated uh, earlier, uh, a couple weeks ago, the Lazy Peon, he published his kind of semi-review talking about or really just kind of complaining about the leveling experience. And unfortunately, I did not get the opportunity to watch that video because he took it down. I actually got to see that video through Scott Zone's reaction to that video. I'll include the link in the description below for you guys if you haven't seen Scott Zone's reaction to his video. I think it's really interesting. But I wanted to talk about that because pretty much the rumors are that he took it down because he was receiving death threats or some kind of hate and obviously his numbers from a social blade perspective have been falling i don't know if it's all related to that regardless we reached out to the lazy peon to invite him onto the podcast to talk about it to talk about pretty much anything and everything related to video games and so far uh he stated that he is in the process of moving to i think asia he stated so uh, we wish him luck on his move and hopefully we'll be able to get him on to sit down and have a discussion about like his review and his perspective because honestly the only issue i have with the whole situation isn't that he hated the game isn't that he skipped heaven's word isn't that he didn't either recognize that this is a story-based mmo which i honestly wouldn't fault anybody for how many mmos out there have and do what final fantasy 14 does it can be a little bit of culture shock if you're not necessarily prepared for it you know mentally <laughs> anyway we'll talk about it but I'm curious because it's like, I don't fault him for not necessarily liking the game. If somebody doesn't like the game, honestly, I'm more interested as to why, uh, because I think that's a fun point of conversation. I think that's something to discuss and to get a good insight as to why somebody likes it or doesn't like it in his case. Anyway, so again, my only fault with that is that he took it down because of obviously the reaction to it, uh, especially if he was getting death threats, like I can understand it. I still think it should stand. I think if you stand behind the videos that you state that you should keep them up and be uh you know accountable for them and to have a conversation about them I, that's just kind of a stance that we've always had that's why we have our videos up that whether like you like them or not like it's not going to be about taking them down like oh oh my god you didn't like it anyway <laughs> that all being said i want to dive into kind of the meat of this conversation because i think it's really important we're seeing a lot of this uh, lately and it's the state of the video game review and honestly, I would sit here and tell you that I think video game reviews, they suck. That they're actually completely pointless. They're antiquated by, by just technology in general. Why is this? Now, we tend to hold them up like some form of like scripture. We, we hold the review up to this, this standard. And I think it's just because like we all grew up with the review. We all grew up with, I mean, for me, I remember reading EGM and I remember they would have like three different opinions about the game and slowly because the volume of games has grown and the number of reviewers like within that kind of the <laughs> the industry really hasn't like in 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 scale and so we've seen less and less and though and thus it comes down to kind of one person's opinion i got into a really big um i guess loop or pit or whatever like i don't know the right word for it but essentially this kind of this period of time where if IGN didn't score it a nine or above, I wasn't even interested in playing it. And I missed out on a lot of really good games that thankfully I stopped using reviews. I really stopped even caring about what they said. I always kind of would then go back after I've beaten the game and see if we align up on certain things. So it actually became more of, you know, like where do they, what do they like about it? What do they not like about it? Did it align with me? And screw the score. The score is is junk it's it doesn't even matter but we put so much value into the score that's kind of what this video is about so beyond that <laughs> so they're antiquated the other thing is i think they've been completely replaced and they've been replaced by streamers and streaming and youtube to a, a, an extent but really streaming and what i mean by that is that when you're playing a game and you're streaming it you're actually having a conversation with maybe the viewer in this case so they're 
you're actually seeing real gameplay. You're getting a good feel for what is involved in the game. You'll be able to ask those questions. I think streaming has completely obliterated the need for the written review. And the only reason we have it is because uh, it drives traffic. The only reason we <laughs> that it's there, but the animosity behind it from the gaming community, because again, it's either 10 or a zero generally like i know there are people out there that are like well maybe it's like a yeah it didn't do everything perfectly like people who you know like can look at from a critiquing perspective like okay this really worked this maybe didn't work so much but beyond kind of that like exception to the rule like if it's a 10 or a zero if it's a if it's a hundred or if, if it's garbage i think that's where streaming comes in because it comes into that like well it, obviously it's not complete garbage Obviously, you know, we're having that kind of social aspect, but the danger in this is obviously streaming has led to more and more emphasis on multiplayer games because those are games you can play with a community or with your friends and they have a longer lifespan than a single player game. So ultimately streaming has replaced reviews uh, <laughs> and then you have obviously the, the, the challenges that are brought into that. Maybe we'll talk about that more in depth in a future video, but uh, kind of the last point that I, I want to make, and I want to know your thoughts. I would love to know where you fall, because if somebody reviews something too high, let's say I was like, oh, 14's a 10. Somebody who disagrees can be like, oh, you're a shill, you've been paid off, uh, etc. They'll do whatever they can to discount my opinion of the game, because it doesn't necessarily align with their own. Now, if somebody were to come in, like Lazy Peon, and say that he didn't like the game, well, then, like, he's garbage, he's trash, like, we have to destroy him. Uh, I, I don't agree with that mindset either way, because I think, again, <laughs> it's how can op an opinion be wrong? A fact can be wrong. Like, if you think that Final Fantasy XIV is not a story-driven game, well, um, that's a fact. It's a story-driven game. You would be incorrect in that in that thought. But if you didn't like that it was a story-driven dri game, you that's okay. Like, you're allowed to, to think that. And maybe it's not the game for you. Like, that's one of the best things about society today is we have an immense amount of games and stuff to enjoy. So those are my thoughts regarding reviews and why they suck because they're antiquated, streaming has replaced them, and it really doesn't matter what they say because it doesn't all, you just need to line up with the general thought, which I think eh, there's a big risk there because then you kind of run into this risk of groupthink where you have to love it, where everybody has to praise it, or like there's no room for actually like discussion. And I think that's a risk. And that's something that hopefully we try to do around here and discuss. Hopefully us all in the workforce, uh, you know, are able to kind of take that into other communities with respect and love for the game and love for all games because, and love for the people who make them. I think that's also kind of key because, you know, bonuses and things like that are paid out on it. But that's a, <laughs> that's a deeper dive for another day. I just, I wanted to get your thoughts on it because that's where I come from. Um, I watched, uh, like I said, Lazy Peon's review through, or review through, uh, Scott's own uh, interpretation, and I really appreciated that. I wish I could have watched uh, his video, The Lazy Pawns. I wish he didn't take it down. Um, I think that essentially kind of speaks a little bit more to that he might, might not necessarily stand 100% behind it. But that's just my interpretation of the situation. Again, we reached out to him. We'll let you know if anything comes out of it. Uh, and for anything that we discussed here in this video, I'd love to know your thoughts. Sound off in the comments below. Let's have that, that conversation. But for Work to Game, my name's Brian. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.